Hello, Hayley. This is Hayley Cooper, everybody. We're really pleased to introduce you to her. She's got the most amazing story to tell you. We're Henry and Henry, Annette and Graham Henry, and we really, we're really keen to, to hear all the details of this story. And although we talk a lot about health on these um, stories, this one is different, but it still has an element that relates to certainly a vegan way of life. But can you please start at the beginning with this one? It needs to start at the beginning. Yes, thank you for the introduction. Um, so like you said, my story is very uh, unique and different. However, I also think it's quite relatable as well for people that um, basically love animals. So I live in South Africa in a part of Kruger National Park. So I'm very lucky to be in the middle of the bush, surrounded by all of the animals, lions, elephants, leopard, buffalo, you name it, it's all here, um, literally in my backyard. And what actually happened is that one day I had a phone call from the managers of the property and there was a very young bush buck um, who was walking around and going up to people and seemed to be in distress. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, a bush buck is a type of antelope, which is similar to a deer, but not a deer, it's an antelope. Um, so it was a young female and she was just a few days old. And it's not common for them to be out and about, especially not common for them to go anywhere near people. And um, what would happen naturally is that they would hide and the mum would go and feed them a couple or a few times a day, um, but they would stay completely hidden for at least a few months. So we knew that this was a odd situation and there was something not right. So because I've got a background in wildlife rehabilitation, uh, my managers contacted me to see if I would be able to help in any way. So I was actually on holiday at the time when I had this message and I came back to the lodge and um, I went to find her in this certain area where they said they would mainly see her and I had to sort of catch her which was not the easiest thing to do because although she was going up to people she also was you know a wild animal. And I took her home and I spoke to a good friend of mine who is a professional in wildlife rehabilitation. And she advised me on basically the best way to care for her with regards to feeding and um, had to stimulate her to go to the bathroom and all of that kind of thing and know how much to feed her and how often. Um, and obviously I needed to figure out why she was on her own. So what we had realized was that her mum had this huge growth on one of her legs and she was battling to walk. Um, so what, from our understanding, she had actually just stopped producing milk and stopped feeding the baby because she was just trying to survive herself. So although it sounds quite harsh, you know, in the wild like this, that is what the animals do. They have to sort of look after number one. So within about four days of me starting to look after the baby, the mum was actually uh, killed by a leopard um, inside the lodge anyway. So I had this baby and what I was doing was every day I was feeding her and, and everything. And then I was taking her back to the bush to the area where she sort of hung out mostly and then every afternoon I'd have to try and catch her again which wasn't easy even when I had the bottle and trying to entice her and then the most important thing was actually to keep it inside the house overnight because the problem was even though naturally they're used to staying very still and quiet and hiding in the bush because she didn't have a mum and she was looking for her mum still she would call out and stuff and obviously um, I'm in an area with a very high density of predators and um, so they would have easily you know um, found her so I, I just felt that I needed to take her in at night and then eventually we realized that this was not very sustainable for me to be taking her back and forth, um, you know, around the lodge and, and just hoping for the best. So the fence you can see behind me never used to be here. So I'm sat in my garden at the moment. So we built this fenced area. It's actually quite a large space. And um, I remember for like two days, I had her mostly in my bedroom before it was finished so it was really frustrating because I really wanted her to be outside I knew that was what was natural for her and she used to like hang out with us on the bed and just 
you know, run around the bedroom and stuff. So eventually when we finally had the garden ready, we let her outside and she just like ran around and around and around and around. And I actually sent a video to the friend of mine that was advising on what to feed her and everything. And I was like, what's wrong with her? Like, look at her, she's going crazy. And she's like, no, she's just happy. So uh, that was really nice. Um, and yeah, basically over a set sort of period of a few months, I was feeding her and looking after her. And we spent a lot of time together. We had a, a very, very strong bond to the point where she actually would, um, she bonded to both myself and my partner, but more so to me because I was the one feeding her. And he is a, a field guide, um, a safari guide. So he comes home uh, late in the evenings. So I would be sat on the sofa and uh, my buck would be sat next to me. And when he would come home to join us on the sofa, she would actually stretch her legs out and huff at him because she didn't want him to sit down on the sofa with us. Hayley, sorry to interrupt there. We just, we, we kind of lost the sound a little bit. I don't know whether it's at your end or ours. It's very, it's gone very, it's very quiet. Faint. It may be recording properly, we don't know, but it's, it's very just, quiet. I don't know if there's something that's changed. So nothing's um, changed. Nothing on my that's side. Better. That, that's, that's better. That's better now. Would, would you be willing to just re relate that? We heard part of it about uh, about the, the, the little bit of story there that you told. Can you just re repeat that bit? Because it was it was lovely. So it, just in case yes. it wasn't heard properly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we had a really close bond and she bonded with both myself and my partner, um, but more so with me because I was obviously feeding her. So I was her mum in effect. And he used to come home late from work and the two of us would be sat on the sofa normally. And then when he wanted to sit down with us, she would stretch her legs out and then she would just huff at him. Um, and sometimes he sat on the floor. Um, I do actually recall a time when we both sat on the floor so that she could have the entire sofa because <laughs> that's just what she wanted at the time. Um, so, so yeah, so during this sort of period of me looking after her, I myself, as I said, am an avid animal lover. It's one of the main reasons I moved to South Africa to be in nature like this. But I also have always been someone that's very interested in health. And I would spend my free time watching YouTube health related videos. And I watched um, the documentary, What the Health, which was actually recommended for me by YouTube. So thank you to YouTube. Um, and I was obviously really shocked and upset, like we all are when we watch it. And uh, I decided to go vegan overnight. But I had said that I was going to do a month. So I was like, I'm going to try and be vegan for a month and, you know, just see. Um, so while I made this decision and this, and I've gotten so upset about it, I was obviously still looking after this little bush buck. And it really sort of affected me because I realized that I would do anything for her. I like really, she, she was like my, my child. And how could I possibly be, I, I, I although I, I didn't eat much, um, much meat, I ate a lot of eggs and cheese. Obviously, I understood about the entire industry now and realized that by eating these things, I was contributing to the entire thing. So um, although I was somewhat sort of vegetarian, it still affected me a lot. And I realized that I couldn't possibly um, be love love her and see her strong personality um and still be contributing to this industry you know it's like every single day i just was reminded how every single animal has a unique personality and you know she she had all her quirks and her funny things and and what have you and i just yeah it just really sort of i made the connection i guess is the best way of putting it um, and then it came to the point where I needed to set her free because I do not believe in keeping wild animals as pets. And this was obviously very stressful for me. I literally had to open my gate and let her go. And I generally thought I would never see her again. Um, I remember it almost like it was yesterday, even though this is five, nearly five years ago. Um, I followed her around for quite a while. And then she just walked off and she went down towards the river um, and I 
went to work and then about an hour later one of the staff at the lodge came to let me know that she was outside another gate crying so then I, I went to go and check on her and she obviously was like okay you're here and then for the next uh, sort of few months she would follow me around a lot every time she saw me she would follow me so she would come into the office and this is now a a commercial safari lodge so we have guests come so sometimes she would walk through reception and then she would walk into the gift shop and my office was behind that and she would just stand in my office with me so yeah it was it was a very entertaining for a lot of people um but I still she would still come home at night so even at this stage once she was completely free she would come home and she would uh, stay inside the house so something that we did right from the beginning is we actually covered our entire house in blankets because we don't have carpet and obviously I didn't want her to slip because she has like little hooves so we lived like that for months and months and months and she would sleep on the sofa um so she she really had like the run of the entire house and then one day she came home like she always does just as it was getting dark and then she stood at the gate and then she sort of looked and you could see she was like thinking about it and she was like do I want to go in or do I just want to stay out and then she decided to stay out and I you know obviously let her it was her decision it was a very organic natural sort of progression um and I probably had the most stressful night's sleep ever because you know she was now out there with with all the predators and I didn't know um and then she never Oh, well, I say she never slept in the house again. There was a few occasions um, if there was predators around the lodge. Um, in certain scenarios, I would bring her inside and keep her um, in the house. But that was, had to really be a situation where there was a predator like in and around the lodge and she was in a like definite danger. Um, so... So yeah, all of all of that happened, and then she um, gave birth to her first daughter, which was actually on Valentine's Day um, a few years ago. Um, so that was uh, pretty amazing because she, when she came to me being pregnant, I could like touch her belly and I could feel the baby kick and I could see the baby move around and all of that kind of thing. Um, and then she obviously just arrived one day and she was not pregnant anymore, and then about three weeks after giving birth so we didn't know if the baby was okay because as I explained at the beginning they do naturally just hide them in the bush for a few months normally or well, at least that's what the books will tell you um, and then one day she just kept coming to the house she like came and then she left and she came and she left and I was like what is she doing and then on like her sixth visit of the day she brought the baby um to us so we could meet her and and that was lovely um and then over the last few years, she's had more children. Um, unfortunately, one didn't make it. I'm not sure why or what happened, um, but she did have another two males as well. So that used to always be interesting for us when she would have a baby because we would not know obviously what sex it was. And, um, you know, they're quite different. The males get little horns, eventually become big horns and everything and, and um, so, so yeah, and, and they would come home to our house every day. So um, I'm currently sat on my little veranda area. So this is where they would come to and they would all sort of stand there and look at us. And we didn't really let the babies inside only a couple of times. Um, but obviously she knew the house very well. So she, she could still come inside, but we didn't want them to because they obviously are, are really still wild animals. It's just that they knew that we were safety for them and that we were the way I describe it is we were part of the herd um, because they really saw us as being part of the family I actually have a tattoo on my arm here that says home is where the herd is um, so so yes I, it, it was really nice you know just a, an amazing experience to, to have this relationship with her and then also with her children and then more recently, um, her daughter gave birth. So she now comes with her baby. So it's like, I, I feel like I have a, a great grandchild. <laughs> um, 
Um, so, so yeah, it, it's, it's been life changing for me having this relationship with her. And I often would speak to her and, and say like, thank you. Thank you for helping me make this connection. Um, and I think also, obviously it's very nice for people um, like on social media, for example, to see pictures of me in a bush buck or see a bush buck on my sofa or whatever the case is, um, especially for people that don't live in South Africa. And I think that it's been almost a form of activism myself without it meaning to be because people have been like, oh, you know, Haley has this relationship with this, this wild animal and it has this amazing personality and she, she loves her and you know how is that different to a dog or a cat that we have in our house and therefore how is that different to a pig or a cow or a sheep so I, I think that it has um yeah definitely made other people connect to what is important as well um, and obviously I, I've known this entire time that at some point I could lose her she, you know she was completely wild and free. I actually have another tattoo on my arm saying wild and free as well, um, which, you know, like I said, is is really important to me. I never wanted her to be kept as a pet. Um, if I had, that would have been completely selfish. And she obviously got pregnant and all of that. So she really lived a completely natural life. Um, but unfortunately, about two months ago she was killed by a leopard so um it it was a unusual evening in the sense that we had a lot of elephants break into the camp that night which hardly ever happens um we have an electric fence so it's just very unusual so it was a bit of an odd disruptive noisy night um and also obviously with these things you always think oh what could I have done like is if I'd been somewhere the right time the right place um but I mean the reality is it wouldn't have even been safe for me to actually be walking around in the middle of the night or anything with this herd of elephants in the camp um but the next morning after it happened she she didn't come home but the reason that I really knew that something was not right was because her very young uh, baby boy came to the house on his own and that's not that uncommon. He used to, and some days she didn't come home, but I could just tell by the way he was acting. Um, he was sort of very obviously looking for her. Um, and he even came up onto the veranda area and was sort of like looking in the house. So as soon as I saw his behavior, I thought, oh, I don't know, something's not right here. And then the next day came and then she still hadn't come back, but he had, and luckily he was weaned from, um, from her so he had stopped drinking milk but only just only um, within a month maybe if that so he was still very young um, and then when uh, there's a predator around our monkeys our resident troop of monkeys they will alarm call um, to let you know because they obviously like predator predator and then we all hear them so we know something's around so um, myself and my partner had been trying to find what was going on and, and look, and we'd driven up and down this particular riverbed just outside of the lodge grounds, trying to see where are the monkeys looking, what are they looking at, and we couldn't find anything. Um, and then later the same afternoon, um, he was taking guests out on a safari, and he decided to drive down that area again just to have a look. And unfortunately, he found her um there she, when leopards um kill they normally take them up to the top of a tree so he found her at the top of this tree it's obviously very sad for him as well because he was actually on a safari with guests um and you know he loved her just as much as as I did so yeah and th then I went there like immediately I'm not sure why I just felt like I needed to just see for myself and then I had a, obviously a very um, upset evening. So it's still quite raw with it only being a couple of months ago. Um, and most days I do go down to the tree, which is where she was found. Just because I feel um, there's a connection there. 
but you know it's nice because her children are still around unfortunately one of them um we don't think has made it the older boy but the others are and um so the other three come to the house nearly every day um so yeah and i feel very protective of them especially the little boy because he obviously has lost his mum the same way she did so so yeah but that's that's yeah you feel privileged, uh, Haley, to have had the experience you did, because it sounds like it's, for many people, that would be a once in a lifetime experience. And um, it's, it's something that you would never have expected to happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's, I'm very privileged. And I'm lucky that she, you know, accepted me and let me into her life because um yeah you know it, it, she is she is or was still a wild animal and um i also think it goes to show as well about her personality which is is similar to mine in the fact that she obviously had that will to live when she was so young um you know there's you hear so many stories i mean we are you know in nature and we are you know it's it's how it is um, you hear so many stories of, of young animals, orphaned animals, injured animals, whatever the case is, you know, they just don't make it, which is, you know, is, is understandable. But in her situation, she really wanted to live. So um, the fact that she, she did that and she was, um, she sort of had that uh, personality, really, that's the way I see it, to, and that will to want to, to live. I'm sorry, Haley. We just the sound just has gone off it a little bit again. I, I I don't know what causes what caused it. It's well, just gone very quiet. But you did something last time, and it made it come back again. I don't know whether you just moved something or no. I know last time I just moved closer to the screen. But... Right. We can just we can just hear you. It's we, we slightly hear you. It's slightly hope, faint. Yeah, so hopefully you. it'll it'll be okay on the recording. And you certainly got. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. A marvelous magical story there it, it, it's quite spectacular it's extraordinary i've never i've never heard anything like this in reality i've always assumed these are the things that happen they're a bit it's a bit like a disney tale you know it's, it's so far removed from anything i've ever experienced so I, i've been transfixed for the time that you've been telling this story and, and i really appreciate you, you telling it to us what what i'd like to ask as well is what what lessons have you learned from this experience because i think there's quite a lot there that um, about the the whole relationship with with nature, but what would you say is the most important lesson that you've learned? Um, I would probably say the most important lesson is just having a connection with anybody is so important, and it doesn't matter whether it's a person or you know a, a different species. I guess is the best way to explain it. Um, I actually, I, I don't even feel right using the word animal when I talk about her, just because, I mean, we're all animals, but, you know, my, my relationship with her is, is such that it's, she's more like a daughter than an animal to me. Um, but yeah, I just think how important connection is. Um, and, you know, when you, you find that, how life changing it can be. And also the, the connection I've made to become vegan and also just with her, how you, you really feel so light with it. it it's really just like a weight has been lifted and you sort of align all of your values and everything that you stand for with the way that you live your life and to me there's no better feeling than that that's absolutely absolutely wonderful and it, when when you were talking through the story and um and it affected us deeply when we first heard about it because we knew what the bush book meant to you from previous conversations and uh it was a, a, we were extremely upset as well at the time and um i think to me it made me realize just how much we um we take for granted animals in the wild i mean some for, for lots of people the only connection they have with animals is the animals they have either or as companions as pets um which are completely domesticated or the animals that they unfortunately eat um, and see in the fields, but don't make that connection at all. Um, and we so often anthropomorphize, if you like, our relationships with animals and give them human qualities. To me, what came out in the story you told is 
the whole of the time, even though she, she came into your house and she took your sofa, there was no element of you indulging that. You just allowed her to do what she wanted to do. And then she went home at the end of the day and went into the wild. And that to me is wonderful. You never, you never crossed that boundary, if you like. You, you, you enabled her to do what she did and you learned a huge lesson from it as well. Yeah, and um, I actually was told by a friend of mine uh, once, she said, she has you wrapped around her little hoof. Yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she does. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's such a it's such a wonderful story. And um, what will you take away from that now in terms of what you do day to day? Because that was my question. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think um, obviously I since becoming vegan, it's been a huge aspect of everything that I do. And I've completely changed my life in a lot of different ways. And to me, just trying to help other people make that connection is really like my purpose. And whether that is through my business that does vegan consulting or through my ebook that people read, or even just them seeing a picture of, of me and her and hearing the story, for example, maybe watching this. Um, I think like everything I do points to to that to the end goal of more people becoming vegan. And yeah, I honestly just can't um imagine not being vegan and I can't imagine going back to feeling the way I did pre-vegan when I didn't even know that I didn't feel okay you know it's like there's so many people that probably like oh but I'm fine you know I'm happy and I'm I'm feel light and free and I don't have a burden on my shoulders but you don't actually realize until you make that connection that you do superb I think that that's got to be probably the the, the best way to end um, to, 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 to end this conversation with you. But Hayley, what's the best way for anybody to get in touch with you if they, if they want to find out more about, about you and what you do, what sort of work you do? What's the, the best way for them to contact you? Um, so best on my website, which is wilddreams.co.za. And um, my social media pages are also Wild Dreams. And I uh, also... Um, on email hayley at wilddreams.co.za yeah. okay perfect well that's uh fantastic thank you very much for uh for, for your time hayley and for telling us such a special story and i'm sure that people that listen to this will be moved uh, and will hopefully also learn something of real value so um we'll stop the recording now and then we'll just stay on for a moment afterwards with you thank you <laughs>